Hi, I'm Nick from Income Digs. Welcome to this very first video tutorial, video training for the property management app package for Podio. So first of all, congratulations on making the purchase. You are certainly well on your way to automating and scaling your business. This app package is jam-packed with a ton of awesome stuff, a lot of automation, and um, I'm going to show you how to use all that automation. I'm also going to show you how to modify and build upon that automation so that you can make this app package unique to your business, really. So um, we're going to have several training videos. We're going to start pretty general and pretty rudimentary, but we're really going to dig in by the end of this training series so that you know everything you need to know uh, to make this app package as useful as possible for your business. All right. So let's jump in. What we're looking at right now is uh, we're going to start with some sample data. We're going to have separate videos that show you how to really get set up, but uh, we've loaded this package with some sample data so that we can see how things work with actual uh, information. So what we're looking at now is our, our workspace homepage, and we're going to default this for you with a few reports and things, but it's important that you understand uh, with Podio, you're going to be able to customize this. So you may decide that you want some different reports and figures here, and that's absolutely fine. We're going to show you exactly how to add those and to make those custom reports. But if you want to, at least to start out, we can uh, we can use this this pre setup. Okay. So the workspace homepage is really uh, what you see at the top here is going to be all the members of your team. Okay. So wh whomever's on your team, your activity stream, which is going to keep track of all the things that are changing and being updated within your workspace. And then on the right here is a whole bunch of tiles that we get to customize. Now I have mine filled with custom reports, but you can add a lot of different things here. Um, images, uh, important links and bookmarks, and, and you're going to want to customize that for your business. Okay. So to, to start with today's video, I want to talk about three specific apps, three apps that are really more on the administrative side of your business. You're not going to do too, too much with them after your setup, but they're really crucial and important and they're, they're keystones to your business setup. And those three apps are the entities, the team roles, and the properties app. All right. And we're just going to jump right into those. What the entities is, is a place for you to record some information about your business. Okay. And your business might be you personally, and that's okay too. That's no problem. Or it could be an LLC, an S Corp, and you may have more than one. And the idea here is to certainly store some key information for that business or businesses as far as your tax ID number, um, when it was formed, any important documents we can link as well. But the most important part about this entities is that we would, we're eventually going to tag our properties to these entities so that our communication that uh, gets sent out will be branded how we want it to look. Okay, So if we go into the entities app, we're going to see that we have some sample data here and I have four entities here. Now, um, in this example, what I have is three businesses. Okay, you see these three businesses. And then one, this is more personal. So in, in my instance, and for the sample data, we're going to assume that a couple of these properties I own personally with my business partner. Okay, so, um, and that I'm sure will be a common, uh, a common situation for some of you as well. So you can have your quote, entity is really just a person. But if we jump into one of these, we can see some of the information that we can store. Okay, our legal name and our DBA. Now, sometimes these are going to be the same, right? Um, you might not have a DBA. Now, in this case, it is actual real data. I have a legal name of KB Homes, but the DBA, the tenant facing name, is NY Home Solutions, right? The formation date, the employee ID, the owner or owners are going to be members of your organization. A logo. Now, this is an important part. If we want to have that logo show up on the emails that we send out, we would want that here. Um, and we have a um, recommended size, I think, here of 320 by 122. Um, we have some different settings as far as auto appointment reminders, auto email reminders. We're going to have appointments in this system. And based on the entity, we are going to decide if we're going to automatically send reminders to our, our uh, appointment attendees. Now, we can always turn those off within the appointment. This is just going to be the baseline, the default. The email signature, also important, just like the logo. This is going to show up on all the outgoing emails. All right? And now you can also attach files, and I recommend you do this. All of those kind of annoying to find files, right? your formation documents, um, 
IRS tax numbers and and your um, certificate, your filing certificates, all that, I would I would link to those. And I always recommend that you're using some kind of cloud service like Google Drive or Dropbox or Box, something like that. Okay, so certainly. Um, Put as much data in here as possible and this will be your one-stop shop when you get that request for all those documents and, and you're not sure where they are. All right. So you might just have one of these. I would like you to set up at least one. Uh, you have to, I think, uh, as far as getting through the, the process. Now, that can, like I said, that could be you personally uh, or it could be your business or businesses. Now, the reason I have multiple here, basically the, re the way I run my business is these four entities own properties, but this one is the only one that's going to manage those properties. And let me show you how that works. So within our properties app, we're gonna show you a bunch of cool stuff that it can do, but just for starters, if we pick this one up, we, you see we have two fields for entities, all right? Who owns the property and then who manages the property. And what this allows us to do is we can have properties owned by multiple entities. However, they're managed by a, a different one. In this way, if we want, and it's the case for my business, we have um, almost all of our properties are managed by the same entity so that all that outgoing communication is the same, okay? So, and again, in, the, in your case, it could, these could be the same, but it's up to you to decide that. All right. So now that we're on the Properties app, let's talk about a few things here. Properties app is pretty basic. The property name, which I recommend being kind of the, the street address without the state and the zip code. The address will be stored, of course. Your estimated market value, you're going to put that in and you, you can adjust that over time. You're not going to put in units. You're not going to put in any, any of this. This is all calculated information based on the units that we have. So you don't have to do anything with that. And then this home details, we're going to pull automatically for you some information from Zillow. All right, so as you add properties, this will automatically populate. There's nothing that you need to change or update here. This will automatically populate. Now, sometimes it might be wrong. As you can see in this case, Zillow doesn't know how many bathrooms this property has. So I can easily go in here and say um, how many bathrooms it has if we care about that. But this is a good way um, if you want to grab Zillow data, you can just have it pop up real quick and then you can edit it if you want to. All right. And that's really the properties app. There's really not too much else to that. The units app is more specific. Okay. So um, the properties app is think of every physical address you have. The units app is going to be a lot more comprehensive where we're going to indicate our market rents. We're going to um, track our default values for the advertisements we put out and all of that. All right. Now, one thing that's important here is that if you have uh, single family homes, I'm going to suggest that you create a unit and a property for each, okay? So imagine that you have multiple units per property and you're going to be creating a unit for each of those. But we'll get into that when we talk about the units, all right? Okay, so uh, last app we're gonna talk about with this video is the Team Roles, okay? The Team Roles app is really not connected to any of the apps. It's really just a way of telling the system who we want to assign tasks for. There's a ton of automation built into this. Uh, when certain things happen and certain triggers are activated, tasks are going to be assigned to people, work orders are going to be assigned to people, and we need to have our team roles filled out so that the system understands who to assign those things to. All right, so when we install this onto your system, we're going to create at least three roles that are gonna be empty for starters, okay? The rental manager, the maintenance manager, and the bookkeeper slash admin. Now, you're definitely gonna be able to add to these if you'd like to, but we're going to start with at least these three because as you're going to see, there's a bunch of automation that's going to call upon this app to understand who should be assigned to different tasks and to different apps, okay? So um, super simple apps here. I'm gonna ask you not to really adjust the role, but just indicate who the team members are. Here you can put some additional info if you want. You can even, uh, if you want to modify the template and add some different fields, you can do that. But at the basic level here, we need to have the role and team member filled out. And again, these aren't really connected to everything, anything, but the Globy flow system is going to be searching through this to understand who to assign things to. All right. And really, those are the three foundational apps that are I'm going to want you to focus on when we get set up. Once you have your info there, then we can really start using the system, adding units, adding renters, etc. All right. So those are really the keystones to the whole system working well. So that's the end of our first introductory video. The next video, we're going to dig into uh, how units work and how they relate to properties and, and how we're able to set some things up ahead of time to save us a bunch of time down the road. All right, thanks. I'll see you in the next one.